Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. Today we're going to look at a relatively novel type of crystal form, novel in the world of pharmaceuticals at least, co-crystals. We'll define what they are, what makes a good co-crystal former, and look at some applications in designing better medicines. So if that sounds good to you, get yourself a drink. I as ever have mm, coffee. And let's make a start. I've said this before, but I'll start by saying it again. Crystalline materials are those where all the molecules they contain are arranged in highly ordered repeating patterns. To be able to define these patterns, we use the concept of a unit cell. A unit cell shows us how the molecules in our crystalline material arrange next to each other. And our macroscopic crystal is built up of countless unit cells extending in three dimensions. If the molecules can arrange in more than one type of pattern, in other words, if there is more than one type of unit cell, we say it is polymorphic and each form is a polymorph. If there's only one type of compound in the unit cell, the material is a pure polymorph and if there are two or more types of compound in the unit cell, the material is a pseudopolymorph. Well, those are my definitions, at least. If we represent the molecules in the unit cell with different shapes, then we can represent pseudopolymorphs like this. The dark blue squares represent drug molecules and the light blue circles represent the other compound. In principle, the other component could be anything that co-crystallizes with the drug. But in practice, for pharmaceutical co-crystals at least, it must be a compound that is not toxic. As I have discussed previously, and the link to that video is in the description, systems that contain water as a co-former are called hydrates, and those that contain solvents as a co-former are called solvates. The US Food and Drug Administration, FDA, defines pharmaceutical co-crystals as crystalline materials composed of two or more different molecules, typically active pharmaceutical ingredient, API, and co-crystal former, co-formers, in the same crystal lattice. Now, you might say to me, okay, Simon, doesn't that mean that hydrates and sulfates should be called co-crystals? After all, that's what the FDA definition says they would be. And I would say, kind of. Although the FDA definition implies any multi-component crystal to be a co-crystal, the guidelines then go on to say that hydrates and solvates are distinct crystal forms, and that other co-crystals should be considered as a special case, where the co-former is not a solvent and is typically non-volatile. Now, I find the FDA definition a bit confusing, so I'll give you my own. For me, a pharmaceutical co-crystal is a system that has at least two compounds in the unit cell, one of which is drug, and the others which are non-toxic compounds, which are ordinarily solids at room temperature and pressure. And while we're on the subject of definition, here's a question for you. Is a salt a co-crystal? Hmm. After all, we could consider the ions to be distinct components in the unit cell. For me, the answer is no. I consider a salt to be a neutral species containing ions, so there's only one component in the unit cell. Handily, the FDA and I are in agreement on that. The FDA says that the components in a co-crystal must interact non-ionically. So, from a regulatory perspective, salts are not co-crystals. I've put a link to the FDA guidance in the description should you wish to read it for yourself. Hopefully then, you are clear on what a pharmaceutical co-crystal is. A unit cell with at least two compounds in, one of which is drug, and the other which is a non-toxic solid at room temperature and pressure. But why are they of interest? Now, that comes down to something we've discussed before. The strength of the bonds holding the molecules together in the crystal lattice. The physico-chemical properties of crystalline materials 
nearly all derive from the strength of these bonds. So if a pure crystal form doesn't have acceptable physicochemical properties, then by making a co-crystal, we can change the strength of the bonds, hopefully for the better. This is, of course, the same reason hydrates and solvates are important. But an additional benefit of co-crystals is that we have way more choice of co-former. We could choose to co-crystallize two drugs together, or a drug with an excipient that did something useful, like enhanced solubility, or absorption, or mass taste. Let me show you an example of a pharmaceutical co-crystal, in this case between melamine and cyanuric acid. These bond together in a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, and I think you might see why they make a great co-crystal. They have a number of electron donor and acceptor functional groups, perfectly in line with each other, so can align because of very strong hydrogen bonding. Co-crystals have become a bit of a hot topic in the pharma industry in the past 20 years or so, and several products are now on the market that contain the active in a co-crystal form. Funnily enough though, co-crystal products have actually been available since the 1960s. Betaclor, approved in 1963, before even I was born, was an admixture of chloral with betaine. It was originally developed as a taste mask formulation of chloral, and was only discovered to be a co-crystal in 2016. Cafcit is a treatment for breathing difficulties in premature babies. As its name implies, it's a mixture of caffeine and citric acid, and was originally thought to be a salt, caffeine citrate, but was found to be a co-crystal in 2007. More recently, products have been launched that were designed from the outset with the active in a co-crystal form. For example, Suglat, approved in 2015, is a tablet form of Ipraglyphlosin, used for treatment of type 2 diabetes. On its own, Ipraglyphlosin has a propensity to form a hydrate on exposure to water, which hinders its absorption, but by formulating it as a co-crystal with L-proline, Suglat is stable with respect to humidity. Stigartro, approved in 2017, is a tablet form of ertuglyphlosin, formulated as a co-crystal with L-pyroglutamic acid. In this case, when being developed, none of the polymorphs of ertuglyphlosin were found to have suitable properties. So a team at Pfizer developed three co-crystals. The marketed form, plus one to one, and one to two co-crystals with L-proline. You might notice a similarity between these two products. The actives are the same class, so structurally similar, and both form co-crystals with L-proline. One more good example before we finish. Entresto, used to treat heart failure, is a co-crystal containing two actives, valsartan and sacubitril. It was approved in 2015, and the co-crystal form improves the bioavailability of valsartan while lowering the dose. Clever stuff. So that is all we need to know about pharmaceutical co-crystals. They are crystal forms that contain at least two components in the unit cell, a drug, and another compound that is not toxic and is ordinarily a solid at room temperature and pressure. They are useful because the strengths of the bonds holding the lattice together will be changed, so they may give higher solubility of the drug. But they can also improve bioavailability while reducing dose, could improve stability, and or allow two drugs to be administered at the same time. Right, now I hope you found that useful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And please tell your friends about the channel. All of that really helps. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.